Well, hello and welcome back to Rare Classic Cars. It's a beautiful spring day here in May and thought I'd show you another one of my favorite vehicles. I call this one of the most comfortable vehicles I own and also one of the best values. And that's this 1973 Mercury Marquis Brome hardtop coupe. Now you may be saying to yourself, boy, uh, did I see something like this before on your channel? And the answer is yes, I actually have a nearly identical 1973 Mercury Marquis Brome hardtop coupe in ginger glamour metallic, kind of a dark chocolatey brown with a dark chocolatey brown cloth interior. And this one is essentially the same model, similar option content, but these cars are so great I had to have two. Uh, I think I paid about $5,500 for this car back in the day. It had 45,000 miles when I've got it and it's got about 51,000 now. So I've driven it 6,000 miles maybe in the last, eh, you know, six, seven, eight years, something like that. It's hard to keep the miles off a car like this because it just drives so well. And it's so smooth, so effortless. I found this car in West Virginia. That's where its home was. That's where it was sold originally. It's one of about 900 of these that was made in what was called light blue paint, kind of like a North Carolina blue, if you will. And same color for Fords was pastel blue. It's a non-metallic, obviously light kind of powder blue. Some people don't like it. I thought it was kind of cool. You know, it's a, a unique color for the period, certainly with the white vinyl top and wait till you see the white vinyl twin comfort lounge seats with the navy blue carpet and navy blue dash. That kind of sold me on it. The other thing that sold me on it is I bought it from the original owner. This was his baby. He had it the, its whole life and he really, really took good care of it. I don't think this car really saw much in the way of inclement weather. Maybe it saw a little bit in the first few years of its life, but certainly nothing for most of the time. The paint is in really, really nice shape, as is the top, as is the interior, the carpets, the dash. It was clearly a loved car, and it's also a high option car. This one has a 460 underhood. The 429 was standard. 460 came equipped in about a third of these vehicles, but it also has the appearance protection group, the body side molding, the protective rub strip in the bumper up front that you see there. You can also notice cornering lights, which do work. Let's see if you can see this kick on here as the blinker turns on. Hopefully you can see that. It has cruise control, the twin comfort lounge seats, which interestingly were the same price as the 460, both $75 and 72 cents. Uh, kind of strange that they were both the exact same dollars and cents, but they were. And uh, tilt wheel, intermittent wipers, AM FM, 8-track radio, and a whole host of other things. Uh, remote control outside mirror on the right side too, which was pretty rare for these vehicles. But again, these are still great values in the marketplace. For those who are looking to get into the classic car collecting hobby, it really doesn't get better than this. I don't know why, but Mercury's in particular don't really have much of a following. Most of the General Motors vehicles do. Uh, interestingly, the Chevys have the largest following, so they're actually the most expensive. And Pontiacs also have a good following, but Oldsmobiles and Buicks, you can tend to pick those up for relatively good prices. Cadillacs are a bit more expensive. The Fords, tend to be cheaper in general. The Lincolns obviously are relatively expensive and even the LTDs and the Galaxies and things like that. But Mercury's, most people don't want them and I love them. This is not just a Ford that's been tarted up. It's a bit longer wheelbase, 124 inch wheelbase versus 121 for the LTD. It has a completely different sound insulation package in it. There's actually burlap bags stuffed in the back here. If you take off these door panels, in the back or the trim panels in the back, you'll find burlap bags that are in the quarter panels to try to muffle the sound. That was something that came with the Marquis Brome package. And the reason why I know that is that my friend Tony Lawler, who has Tony's Car Care, that's the YouTube channel, uh, who fixed these rear window motors for me so they would operate again, he's taken the back seat out of this car in a number of my vehicles and we just compare what's different every time he does it. Oftentimes the back windows on these vehicles the plastic gears are chewed up and you have to remove the rear seat, remove the trim panel, and you can replace it. And Tony does a great job. And you can see him do that 
on his YouTube channel, Tony's Car Care. He's done it again on a number of my cars. But regardless, like I said, paid $5,700 for this, although that was a while ago. This car may be worth like 12, 13,000 today, something in that zip code. Still a very affordable classic, especially for what you get. And this is a classic that you can keep forever. It'll keep you satisfied. The 460, in spite of this being a 1973 model with retarded ignition timing, these have retarded cam timing by about six degrees. You can change that by changing the timing set to a 1972, 1971 timing set. I think actually 1971, an earlier timing set, and you get the cam timing back. But the car's got plenty of power, plenty of scoot, no issues at all with acceleration. And it just is so quiet at freeway speeds, about 67 decibels at 70 miles an hour, whether you're going over concrete or asphalt. So it's really Lexus-like quiet by even modern standards when you're driving it on the freeway. So very pleasant ride, very comfortable. Let's take the camera off and talk a little bit more about the car as we walk around it. All right, so here we go, walking around the 1973 Marquis Brome. Another thing I forgot to talk about, the optional wheel covers here, these turbine vane wheel covers that I think are so handsome. One could say that maybe Ford patterned these after some of the GM turbine vane wheel covers. I think Ford came out with these a bit later than GM. GM had the turbine vane covers in 67, I want to say, on some vehicles like the Riviera, and Chevrolet would later use them across their lineup, including Corvettes, Monte Carlos, Caprices, and Ford, I think, kind of copied that. But they look awesome on this vehicle. You can see there the cornering light. And as I mentioned, this car rides atop 124 inch wheelbase. It's a pretty big vehicle. One year only styling, a number of things were one year, including this rear end. In 74, that would change. The trunk lock cover would come back. This rear end panel would be different. 73 was the first year that they redid the styling to be more angular had overall less, I would say, le more conventional lines. We'll put it that way than the 72, which is there in the garage with this pretty pronounced kick up in the belt line you can see here. Somewhat of a Coke bottle shape, but missing the plan view Coke bottle. So not really, not really a true Coke bottle shape, but certainly has that kick up you see there in the belt line. This one doesn't, it just has this trim, uh, this piece of trim that came with the marquee bromes that makes that line there. And of course, since it's a brome, you get the griffins and the name brome here. But overall, just a wonderful car and in beautiful condition. You can see the inside here and the twin comfort lounge seats. This was the last year for the Twin Comfort lounge seat option for Ford, and you can see why I love them. They are as comfortable as they look. This is vinyl, not leather, but a very high grade, very thick vinyl. It wears wonderfully well. One year only door panels. In 72, the door panel was all soft touch. In 73, this piece is hard. There is a soft armrest here. This is all really nice and soft. Power door locks, which Ford's door locks were much quieter than GM's electric locks. You can hear it. GM, that would sound like the cell block unlocking. And if you got a white interior, you didn't get a carpeted kick panel down here. You got this. I'm not sure why they did that. They could have made it blue carpet, just like the blue interior, but they didn't. This car also has the optional passenger side recliner, which was about a $40 option. And on the inside here, you can see the AM FM 8-track radio. Manual air conditioning, you could get automatic climate control in these vehicles. 1973 was the only year for these white pointers on the gear shift, fuel, and speedometer. 74, they go to orangey red. I guess it was too hard to read for some folks. And then this is the optional cruise control steering wheel with a rim blow horn. You pinch the rim and I have one horn out. Uh, that's why it's only one tone, but that's how you honk the horn. And the clock still works in this car. It's not set to the correct time, but you can see it's still ticking away. 
huge glove box. And there's still the original owner's manual in here and the owner card. And all the stuff that you got when you bought your car in the 70s, the starting instructions. These cars were jetted pretty lean. They should have said uh, that the way this car starts when it's cold, at least if it's cold or outside, is start, stall, start. And that's how they were from the factory. If it was a cold day, you kind of just planned on it stalling once and then restarted it, and then it was generally fine. These cars came standard with power windows. The power locks were optional. You can see the fingertip controls here on the cruise control. Set and accelerate and coast off and on on the left. Beautiful looking wheel that would be used across the Ford lineup on Fords to Lincolns. This dash was also the first year of this dash. It has a one year only dash pad. The 74 dash pad is different. The 72 dash is totally different. And a comfy back seat and a nice perforated vinyl headliner with a dome light that was reintroduced for 1973 after having been absent since the 1968 model year on the top of the line Mercury's. The car does have rear window defo uh, defroster too, not a defogger. And let's take a look at the driver's side. If you got the Brome, this says Brome. If you didn't have the Brome, this just says Marquee. I thought that was pretty funny that they changed that out. We'll pop the trunk too. This car does have a remote trunk release. Push the button there. Let's take a look at the trunk and listen to these doors close. Just great. No GM from the 70s does that. And I'm a GM fan. Big, big trunk. Spare tire here. And I've got a spare wheel. The previous owner put these American Racing rims, which I was not a fan of, so I promptly sold those and put the original wheel covers back on. Deep well trunk characteristic of Fords because the gas tank is up there. And relatively nicely trimmed. We'll take a step back so you can see the rear end treatment here. It's significantly different than the 72 over there. Still very distinctive. It's interesting it says Mercury here. On the 72 it says Marquee script. And in a smaller font. They made the Mercury a larger font here. Let's check out this back window and how it goes down. So you can see here. And there you have why this is called a hardtop coupe. There is no B-pillar. And if you want to keep your Ford window motors working a long time, Tony Lawler taught me a trick. Don't just hit the switch and have the window crash up into the top here. You kind of bump it once to take all the slack out of the system, then hold the switch until it gets almost all the way up, and then push it again. The hardest thing on these plastic window torque pins in the window motors is when the window crashes down and then stops abruptly or crashes up. So do the same on particularly these big windows and then you'll never have to replace them again. Got the wonderful key buzzer and you can hear the seat back release that's automatic when you open the door. That's what that's for. You can hear it again. Listen for the relay. Hear it? There we go. And that wonderful key buzzer. Let's open the hood so you can see the 460. And again, look at the doors just close effortlessly. So here it is, the 73 460. Still has the York two piston AC compressor. This one works great, no issues at all. The 460 was pretty detuned by this time, making a little over 200 horsepower. I put factory style dual exhaust in this car, so maybe I got another 20 horsepower out of it. But you don't, I mean, this car drives with tons of torque. It 
you don't feel like you're down on power at all. Effortless acceleration, effortless cruising at 80, 85 miles an hour. Speaking of cruising, there's the cruise control servo. These are all these vacuum reservoirs for the climate control. I think there's even a, yeah, there's a vacuum tank here in the fender well and all the vacuum lines for the headlamp actuators, which I've taken out of this car because I have a new set that's been rebuilt and I'm putting that on here. Your typical Ford starter relay on the firewall makes it easy to steal your car on especially the earlier vehicles with no steering column lock. Couldn't have been much more simple. Then you have to crawl underneath the car. And great thing about these, if your heater core goes out, you just take this little access panel off and your heater core pulls right out. If you've done it a few times, it's probably an hour and a half job maybe a couple hours if you rush it you could probably do it even faster i've done it probably three times on these cars and wow is it easier than most other vehicles be sure and if you have a 460 ford they tended to have overheating problems in the summer you want to make sure your fan clutch is good you can see this one's got some good resistance to it uh, sometimes you'll just go and push these and they'll rotate freely. Make sure your fan is spinning appropriately. It should pull a lot of air across the radiator if this car is, the engine is warm and the air conditioning's on in particular. These often die and then the fans just freewheel and the cars overheat. You can replace that with a non-declutching fan. I know a lot of people have done that, um, but I just replace it with a new fan clutch and I never have any overheating issues. Let's start it up here. It is cold, so it'll be on fast idle. <laughs> Super smooth. Got to tighten the power steering belt a little bit, it looks like. You adjust that by moving that nut loosening the pulley and adjust and moving that nut. And here you can hear one side of the exhaust. Just a fun ride. So if you're looking for a affordable classic that you can have fun with, look no further than one of these. The only problem is you're going to have a hard time finding them. These cars are really rare. A lot of them have gone overseas now. They actually love these in the Scandinavian countries, Germany, France, believe it or not. Especially the Mercury's. I don't know why, but the Mercury's tend to go overseas. But if you find one, highly recommend buying it. You're going to love your purchase. It's just a wonderful riding car. All right, so here we go for a ride in the marquee. <laughs> I mean, the effortless torque of the 460 is just so awesome. That was half throttle. You heard it shift at about 25, 30 miles an hour. Full throttle shifts around 50 miles an hour. But you have no problem getting up to speed in this car. And you can hear, just listen how quiet it is. It's just so silent. It's a little bit of engine noise because I've got factory style duels on here. They have a little bit of a rumble when I got my foot on the accelerator. Not bad though. And when I take my foot off, it's almost like you're driving an electric car. I don't hear anything. No engine noise at all. Such a wonderful cruiser. I love driving this car on longer distances because you just feel so relaxed and refreshed. Never hurried. Just kick back, enjoy the ride. 
especially like it when it's a little bit warmer. I can have the windows down. It's a little chilly today, around 60 degrees. Mm -hmm. So we've got the heat on. By the way, in these Ford climate controls, when you move that temperature slider ball all, all the way to the left, temperature slider bar all the way to the left, it opens the recirc door down there. Ford cleverly used the vent door as the recirc door on the air-conditioned cars. Thought that was pretty smart. And the blower is under hood, so you really don't get a lot of blower noise even when that door opens. In any case, just a wonderful, wonderful car to drive. Hope you enjoyed this video of this 1973 Marquee Bro. Thanks for watching. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions for you.